As we are going to prepare to hear from God's word, I want to introduce today's speaker. We have Pastor Raji Joseph here from Toronto, Canada. He's the senior pastor of the Agape Church, which is located in Toronto. And he's the father of Benson and um, Chris and Joseph. Uh, pastor Raji Joseph is not a new face to us. He has come here before and ministered. He will minister from God's word. Let's sit in the presence of the Lord with a prayerful attitude. Pastor Raji Joseph. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Greetings to all of you in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. He reigns and rules in this house. And we are his children. Indeed, I considered that this is a great privilege to stand before you. I thank the church and the pastor trusting me to divide the word correctly. I first of all thank God for his call upon each one of our lives. We stand here to be stewards of all that he entrusted upon to us. Let me just read two holy scriptures that is found in Luke Gospel chapter 23 from verses 44 to 49 and also John's Gospel chapter 12 verse 31. I will read. Now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened. And the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. The second scripture that I mentioned, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world will be cast out. This is a very familiar scripture to all Christians all over the world. Jesus, the son of God, he lived 33 and a half years here on earth. And on his public ministry, he has done many, many miracles. Many, many people were blessed because of his miracles. All those who came to see him, they had a portion of his compassion, a special touch. But people thought those miracles have been ceased at Golgotha. Look at him now. His hands are bound. His feet is bound. He is helpless hanging between heaven and earth. No place to escape. But 
if I tell you this. Jesus did the greatest miracles in his life while he was on earth. He has done it from the cross. Until then, every miracle was helped geared towards individuals or groups of people. Only a portion of people that followed Jesus were the beneficiaries of those miracles. But today, when my Lord is bound to the cross, when people are mocking and scoffing at him and shouting insults to the Lord who is the creator of heaven and earth, he had the greatest miracles and the battles that he had to win from that cross, his hands and his feet bound. He was not only dealing with sin and the law. He was dealing with Sheol, death, and the prince of this world, Satan himself. And he had to fight death itself. Death was not an enemy. He was the enemy. Until then, death had power to hold everyone who died to hold them down. Death had sting. Death proclaimed victory over all valuable ones of this world. Remember, Jesus said, he compared this world to a palace of most valuable things in it. And a strong one is guarding it. Unless a stronger one comes and bind him, you cannot have the valuables. Who are these valuables? It's the lost mankind, humanity. And Satan is claiming every claim upon humanity and through sin death spread through disobedience they became a captive of death and death held everyone down and proclaimed its victory only Jesus Christ changed ugly face of death, calling it the hour of glory. <laughs> Can you see the power of the glory of God flowing from the cross of Christ? The greatest of power humanity ever witnessed in their life. Heaven, earth, Satan shook. The earth shook. The mountains melt before him. When the king rises, the enemy scatters. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, but death is facing a foe for the first time. Praise the Lord. But the power of death could not hold Jesus down. He loosened the shackles of death. He Cut it loose, the power of death, and he rose from the dead. Thank God for the power of the resurrection of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus' death on the cross. He plundered hell and populated heaven. I'll take you step by step and show you why the darkness covered the face of earth, not just through an eclipse. Eclipse will last only five to six minutes, but here, three long hours. From mid-noon, 12 o'clock to 3 p.m., Jesus hung on the cross, as you know, for six long hours. 
from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. But we, what we read is at 12 noon, the sky became dark. Sun gave no more light. Until then, Jesus had a ministry. High priestly ministry already began from John's Gospel, chapter 17. Now, look at this Christ on the cross. Remember, he is the Passover lamb. He is not only the offering, he is the altar. He is not only the altar, he is the temple. He is not only the temple, he is the high priest. The offering, the sin atonement, and the offering for all, atonement for all sins of the world is he himself, his body. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus believed, Jews believed that the first Adam failed in the same place, whether it is true or not. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is right there. Praise the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4, it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were punishment, punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. Praise God. People challenged Christ. Well, while he was on earth, show us a sign from heaven. That would be enough for us. Wait and see what the sign is coming. Praise the Lord. You know, all throughout the scriptures, when we, I am a student of the word of God, I believe you all are. We can learn, even from the two tablets, when God gave ten, ten commandments, the first tablet consisted of our relationship between God. And the second tablet was our relationship with, between man and, and God. Man and man. Praise God. The vertical and the horizontal relationships. All throughout the scriptures we can see that God is a God of balance. And he also when Jesus began to preach the sermon on the mount, you can see those two relationships how it's combined in Matthew's gospel, chapter 5, 6, and 7. And even the epistles, when you read, you can understand the principles of the kingdom of God and the practicality coming in the next chapters. It's always balanced. God is a God of balance. And it has a great purpose. All what he is doing from the cross, it illustrates what it means for the first time in man's history. First word he uttered was, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. What? Yes, he forgave the sinful woman. He forgave so many, Zacchaeus, of course. But this forgiveness covers everyone. Those who insulted him, those who pierced his hands and his feet, those who scoffed at him, laughed at him, betrayed him. All those, we are also in the part of that forgiveness. How many of you can say, thank you, Lord, for forgiving me from the cross? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your right relationship, he reconciled all men to God through his high priestly ministry from the cross. Relationships, you have complete access to the throne of grace. You can come boldly to the throne of God and call him Abba, Father. Until then, everyone in Jewish culture, they use the word Adonai. Never Father. They did not address God as Father, even though God told them, I am your Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, secondly, Jesus said, I not only have the power to forgive, 
I will show you what that forgiveness will do in practicality. The most horrible criminal of that time, one on the cross, in fact, two of them. But one watched Jesus' reaction from the cross. He realized this man is deformed. He is as though not as a man. His face is so swollen because they plucked every hair from his face. He was disfigured. His people hit him with their naked fist. And also they put a crown of thorns on his head and hit it with a stick. You can understand. And his back was plowed like a field. And the pieces of flesh and the blood flow mingled down together. All the whips of Roman lips to call the flesh out of his body. His joints can be seen. People thought, wow, helpless. But this thief understood. He is not an ordinary man. <laughs> How do you see Jesus? Beautiful, handsome, and then we can all go and kiss him. Look at Jesus on the cross. The most horrible death. No one would look at him twice unattractive. He had no beauty to desire. Those who looked at him, they covered his, their face. Why? The one who hung on the cross is cursed. Golgotha is only 30 to 40 feet above by the roadway. When people walk, they cover their face. They should not look. They would not look but they hurled insults. Praise God. From Pilate's Petrotrium, it's only about 500 to 600 meters walk. Jesus is hanging there publicly. No one would desire him there unless you watch the weight of the glory of God, of his character that comes out of the cross. When someone bruises you, and hurt you through the jarred clay of your vessel and those wounds, what comes out? When somebody push you and shake you and challenge you and curse you and insult you, what comes out of you would be what's inside of you. If you are filled with the hope of glory, which is Jesus Christ, glory will come out. When you go through sufferings, when you are going through depression, when you are going through isolation and rejection and betrayal, relationship breakdowns, wow, glory only will come out. What's inside of you will come out. Everything inside of his body came out. Last drop of blood and water came out. He gave it all for us. Now they are seeing what's inside of him coming out in the most excruciating moment of his life. Wow. This thief watched him. No insults, no cursing words, but forgiveness. Then this thief latched on to that word. Wow. And he rebuked the other thief and said, we deserve what we received. But this man has done nothing wrong. Lord, remember me when you come in glory in your kingdom. Thief's understanding was little skewed. Because nobody rewritten those laws. The ambiguity of death remained behind the, 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 the curtains until Jesus revealed it. Even Martha thought when Lazarus will rise one day, when everyone 
in the last day of resurrection the thief said if you forgive me that is the concept lord remember me jesus said i not only proclaim forgiveness i will show you the result of forgiveness instant change of your destiny instant washing away of your past no more guilty verdict against you i declare you free not at the last day not on the third day but today for the first time in the humanic history that jesus is revealing that death has no power on us today 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 is the day of salvation today is the day of the acceptable year of the lord today is the day of the favor of the lord the jubilee of the lord today is the day of the deliverance for my people oh hallelujah yes our destiny changes now your access to god has changed forever now jesus says third utterance from the cross women this is your son john this is your mother human relationship has changed forever you can have a son that you did not give birth from your womb son you can have a mother that you did not come out of that woman's womb human relationship only will go up to the grave site once we put that last fist of dust finished flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god but look at yourself look at each other where death cannot separate you we are one family the church of christ your brother sitting next to you your sister sitting next to you your mother your father everyone in this church can be a father and a mother and a brother and a sister to you we have only one father we have only one body we have only one church we have only one baptism to christ we have only one holy spirit and he is the father of all human relationship don't see it the way you ever seen before now we are brothers and sisters in christ that goes through eternity our elder brother is jesus christ our lord now the battlefield is changed the face of the battle has been changed why and how darkness three hours the greatest battle yet to begin but no human eyes can see darkness covered it because the prince of darkness is going to be cast out i'll take you through some scriptures you remember three days of darkness fell on egypt before the first passover before their redemption exodus chapter 10 verse 21 to 23 then the lord said to moses stretch out your hand toward heaven that there may be darkness over the land of egypt darkness which may even be felt so moses stretched out his hand toward heaven and there was thick darkness in all the land of egypt for 3 days not 3 hours 3 days they did not see one another nor did anyone rise from his place for 3 days but all the children of israel had light in their dwellings egyptians worshiped the sun god called ra or horus god struck their god 
that was the ninth plague until the passover that night no darkness covered the face of the earth only the midnight third day the passover meal was eaten and the death angel of death passed through egypt this is the true passover every other passover was just a shadow every other blood shed innocent blood that shed from garden of eden when men sinned and the lamb that it was not his, his own fault god had to shed that blood and spill that innocent blood on the earth first murder first killing first shedding of the blood here in says god egyptians always considered not only egyptians all over the world first borns are considered precious and great but egyptians considered them sacred remember israel was called the first born of god god said your first born will die before any plague began god warned egypt and pharaoh if you don't let my first born go and worship me i will kill your first born before any plague began in the outset itself god didn't mince his words he said it straight forward exodus chapter 4 verse 20 to 23 we read then moses took his wife and his sons and set them on a donkey and he returned to the land of egypt moses took the rod of god in his hand and the lord said to moses when you go back to egypt so it's it's in the beginning god says see that you do all those wonders before pharaoh which i have put it in your hand but i will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go then you shall say to pharaoh thus saith the lord israel is my first son my first born so i say to you let my son go that he may serve me what god says is let my son go god was not hesitant to call israel my first born my son if you don't let if you refuse to let him go indeed i will kill your son your first born wow understand now the battle is so personal to christ personal to god god is the avenger of all evil give time for god to avenge don't take revenge in your own hand when you know this portion you can truly go home forgive everyone when i god opened my eyes to these scriptures i understood why jesus said forgive them as i forgave you praise god we have god has given us a huge heart to forgive others he has he taught us how to forgive he not only taught us how to pray he not only taught us how to forgive he also taught us how to die and what happens after death this become personal to god your father pharaoh killed my first born remember when moses was born the pharaoh decreed that all male child will be new born children will be killed because they were a threat to egypt pharaoh to their kingdom god remembers god remembers yes god already warned pharaoh the end result from the beginning itself just like in genesis god foretold the satan's defeat the seed of the woman will be crushing your head before anything else happen 
God did not mince his words. He said, the seed of women will crush your head. Yes, he who touches you, he touches the apple of God's eye. In wilderness, Jesus just gave just a small foretaste of his stripes. Three strikes, three stripes with the word of God wounded him. Praise the Lord. But in the cross, on the cross, Jesus is going to defeat him, disarm him, and publicly shame him and strip him of all power and all arms of him. Praise the Lord. The fa face of the battlefield is changing. Yes, darkness through the, throughout the scriptures has been associated with judgment. Cross is the, is the divider between darkness and light, heaven and hell, death and life. He endured darkness because we could be saved from darkness. God responded, removing all sunlight which he created in the beginning of creation, first creation. Here on the cross, the second creation. Remember, in the first creation, he created everything else perfect. But a weak man. Man that God intended to walk with God every cool of the day. And impart the nature of God and the goodness of the Lord. Develop the character of God by daily walking with him. That's why we read, when God created man, he created them in his own image. Likeness to be followed. That should be emulated by walking with God. Imparted from God. That's why God's design was, praise God. He is here in Amos chapter 8 verse 9. Amos 8, 9. You know, it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will make the sun go down at Mid noon. This was prophesied long ago. And I will darken the earth in broad daylight. The greatest battle was prepared in the plan of God, in the mind of God, in the heart of God. Yes, spectators from all around the world to watch the sufferings of Christ, most of them watching in pleasure. Matthew's Gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they talked about Jesus' crucifixion. But they didn't explain why the darkness was. Until there is someone came after. That is Paul. Because no eyes have seen the spiritual battles that was taking place on the cross. Jesus took Paul to third heaven. And showed him that Things that cannot be uttered among men. No eyes could see, no ears could hear what was uttered in heavenly places. And through the abundance of the revelations of God, Paul said, I have much to boast and tell you, but I will not. Because I cannot share those things with you. But I will share, you, share with you this. In... You see, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. It says, Colossians 2, 14 and 15, Paul gives a glimpse of what happens on these three hours. Look carefully and listen carefully. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. You have died with Christ and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world? What happened on that cross? By Jesus taking Paul to heaven, to the third heaven, Showing the glimpses, the mysteries of the revelations. 
he showed page by page. That's why Paul said, when I was converted, I did not go to Jerusalem to learn. I did not even go to apostles. What I received of the Lord, I pass on to you. Many apostles were before Paul. Those who walked with him, ate with him, slept with him. But he who never knew Christ in flesh, only in the spirit realm, he knew Jesus Christ. He understood the depths of the heart of God through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, he is writing later on as a revelation to all mankind. Because the Lord God was good enough to show Paul for our sake. Amen. Defeat, disarm, rulers, authorities, triumph, victory, conquering, parading, spoils, plundering. Those are words of war. He trains my fingers for battle and my hands for war. Christ did battle for us. The mother of all battles. The cross of Christ was a maker or a marker of a battlefield where Satan and all his armies fell in defeat and the Lord of glory rose to victory. A place where Jesus spoiled, disarms, principalities and powers and publicly shamed the enemy and openly triumphing over them. According to Romans law, once the penalty is paid, they report the verdict page, guilty page. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, Jews will understand what Paul is writing. Today in this culture, you and I may not understand. What happens is once the execution has happened, that judgment sheet is gone. That condemnation sheet is, charge sheet is gone. What Christ did was, you know, the law that existed without the remission of the blood, with, with, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. That law exists no more. Because once for all, our Lord Jesus Christ offered himself as a final sacrifice for all mankind. The blood is shed once for all. By shedding of blood, the remission of sin has been accomplished. But not everyone will be saved. Only those who accept this Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. In Acts it says, also Romans, he died for his church even though he loved the world and gave himself up. Only those who accept this sacrifice that God gave us a substitute for all mankind can have this salvation of the Lord. Therefore, therefore, if anyone, any spectator, anyone who doubts, anyone who needs answers, Jesus Christ is our answer. Open your hearts to him. In Psalms, those battles are explained. My time is very much come to an end. Bulls, they came surrounded me. Like a roaring lion, they attacked me. And the strings of death and sheol entangled me. He explains the battle in Psalms 22. And it says, yes, he overcame all that. Now, no weapons the enemy form against you shall prosper. You are free people. God set you free. If the Son of God set you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. He made the enemy public spectacle. Paraded them. The word used is spoils. If Romans any time conquer a nation, they will plunder that nation. Bring the spoils and parade before his army. Heavenly horse watching. Heaven is watching. Jesus paraded his enemy and showed off the spoils. 
setting God's people free. But there is one more thing he left to do. He said, of course, it's finished. Salvation of the man, redemption is complete. But our God makes it very personal. He said, one thing I will do only when you come to heaven. I will read that and close. One more thing to left to do, which will be done by only after the saints reach in heaven. That is Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. When you are there, the church in the presence of the glorious church of Christ, the final destiny and the judgment against you in front of you. God prepares a table for me before our enemies. Flesh and blood is not our enemy. It's the deceiver from the beginning. Jesus battled the mother of all battles from the cross for you and me. He is still fighting for you. He is going for it before you. He is within you, the hope of glory, Jesus Christ. Let no wiles and schemes of the enemy Trap you in your track. Move forward with the power of the resurrection of the Lord. May God bless you and thank you.